What's up friends? Today we are going to be talking about the Flipsky VX4 remote controller. Except this time, it'll be nothing to do with the firmware, and it will be all to do about my first impressions, what I think of this remote, and if it's something worth trying out. Let's jump right into it. Alright, so first thing we're going to talk about in this video is the marketing specs. We'll just go through their webpage, I'm going to go through it on my phone to see what they say about the remote and uh, talk about that a little bit. Then we will go into the size and shape of this remote and uh, I'll put up some other remotes on screen to compare it to. After that we'll talk about the screen and how useful it is. And then we will talk about the features, uh, the different things that it offers, and uh, we'll go ahead and set up this remote in the correct fashion for the board that it's going to be on. And then finally, I will show you guys the pain that I had to go through to actually get it to work with my board. And I say get it to work because I'm hoping that I will get it to work in this video. So towards the end, I will be installing this in the actual board and I'll just go through the process with you guys and let you know how it goes. So uh, let's get on to it. So first thing will be the marketing specs. All right, so first thing, marketing specs. So I've got the uh, screen recording going on my phone so you can see, and we're just gonna go through the web page. So first of all, the price on this thing, pretty nice. $90 for a screen remote is pretty average, and if it holds up to the quality, it's gotta be a very compelling option in the screen remote market. Now, the features that they are listing here are definitely all in the remote. Um, no lies about that here. So first thing, color screen. Again, this is a screen remote. It has a circular LCD screen, which is great. And it's super bright. You can see it in the sun. Um, options for kilometers an hour and miles an hour. Yep. Uh, you can use it with the FSESC, which is the Flip Sky uh, VESC based ESCs or other VESCs uh, like Foxbox, etc. Inside they have an SX1280 chip. I'm not going to lie and say that I actually know what that means, but I've heard good things about the LoRa um, Spectrum technology. Uh, so hopefully that works well. I haven't been able to ride with it yet, so. We'll see if it cuts out in the places where my Mavic Tech V2 had trouble. It supports PPM, UART, or PPM and UART mode, and that's really great. Um, a lot of remotes support all those three, but for me, I'd like to put it in PPM and UART mode so I can use the throttle curves options and still get my data on my screen. It says on here that it reports it supports remote and receiver upgrades. I don't know if that means they're going to actually update the firmware further in the future, which to be honest would actually be cool because there's some things that could definitely be added to the features on here uh, that maybe they could push with the firmware update. But if you saw my last video, which you can check out in the iCard if you like, uh, updating the firmware is not the easiest thing in the world, but it is possible. Uh, we've got three speed modes. Uh, high, low, and medium. I haven't been able to try those out yet either, but I think it, I think it limits the top speed. Not 100% sure yet. It has a cruise control mode. I don't know why people like advertise this. I can't imagine why I would ever want to use that, but it's there. It also has power indication lights for the remote and Eastgate power, and we'll check that out when we turn the remote on and set it up. It's got a 1200 milliamp hour rechargeable battery, which is pretty large. Um, it does have a screen, so versus like the VX1 where it had an 800 milliamp hour battery, it doesn't have a screen, so it lasts a long time. So I don't know how long this will last yet. I expect it to last pretty long with such a large battery. It's also got a wrist strap on it. As you can see, it's a pretty nice wrist strap, nice and thick, none of the uh, crappy small ones that I've seen on other, uh, certain other remotes. And finally, it comes with a receiver, I would hope so, um, <laughs> in a complete package like this. And then on here we've got the control mode diagrams, um, some other Momo Jumbo. We've got Type-C charging on it, good to see. Uh, I'll show you that in some B-roll later. Different throttle sensitivities, LoRa technology, color themes, 
and shows a picture of their software there. And that's pretty much it. So those are the marketing specs. I figured I would just go ahead and go through those just for good measure. And yeah, let's get on to the next part of the video. We'll switch camera views and we'll talk a little bit about the size and shape of this remote. All right, so let's talk about the size and shape of the VX4 remote. Now, the VX4 is quite a compact remote. And uh, in fact, it's only 95 millimeters long. And when you compare that to some of the other remotes on the market, this is very pocketable, very compact and easy to hold. Now, the other dimensions are about 65 in width, uh, this direction of the grip, and then about 21 millimeters thick. And this is probably the smallest remote that I own besides the, maybe the Revel remote is pretty small too, um, in terms of like total volume. And the Hoyt Puck is small too, but it's a lot thicker than this one, so uh, a little bit harder to compare to. But of course, this would naturally be compared to the Puck because it's got the same idea, same kind of shape going, and uh, it's also a thumb wheel remote. So the size and shape are really good for me. I think that this fits really well in my hand. You can see from this side view here that it's nice and comfortable. My thumb lines up perfectly with the thumb wheel but I have one friend that has really large hands and he said that this was a little bit cramped for him so you know it would be interesting to see some case mods for this like there are for the Hoyt Puck and uh, we'll see how that goes in the future but for right now this is very comfortable and I'll make sure to try this on with a glove on and stuff in the full review but for now we're just looking at it in my hand and in my hand like this it's very comfortable so Here's a little bit of a top view for you. You can see that your fingers wrap around and they actually go on the screen, which is kind of annoying because it gets fingerprints on it, but it's not that big of a deal. But yeah, very comfortable overall uh, as a first impression. We'll see how it is riding with it for extended periods of time. I know with the puck, I can sometimes get a little bit fatigued holding my finger in the same position for a long time. so see how that fares with this one. Let's go ahead and move on to the next category. Now we're going to take a couple minutes to talk about the screen on this remote and this is definitely one of the best parts. Go ahead and power this on here and there is the beautiful LCD screen. Now this screen is probably my favorite one on any of the remotes that I've tried out. It's just super crisp. Let me see if I can hold it in the focus point super crisp super bright and the colors just look so nice it's not an OLED I don't think but it's a normal LCD and they've just really nailed it with this one this remote in my hand right now is on the orange theme and let me I have another one here that is on the blue theme so I'll just turn that on and we can compare them side by side. So here's the blue one, and here is the orange one. I think they both look super great, and they're both super vibrant. So, there you go. Two beautiful remotes, two beautiful screens, and there are also two other themes, I'm pretty sure. There is a red one, and a green one so uh, maybe I'll try those out later but for now I've left my test bench one on blue and I'm gonna leave this one on orange because I quite like the gradient on the front of the screen so what can you do with this screen uh, this kind of goes into features but we'll go over it real quick so there's a couple indicators on here um, in the middle of your screen you've got your miles per hour indicator just under that, you've got your total trip distance. And oddly enough, you can actually reset this pretty easily on accident. Uh, the reset button for the trip is just the settings button. So pressing that, maybe it's a press and hold. No, I don't know. The website said press, so I'm gonna have to try it out for the review, but um, I'm pretty sure it's easy to accidentally reset that so oops on that but uh, yeah you've got your mileage gauge and you've got your current amps I believe 
that that's motor amps, but I will definitely check on that before the full review. Um, so you've also got your speed mode, L, M, and H, and you have R, which I believe is if you are in reverse mode or not. I'm not sure how you trigger that, but I think there's a way to do that. So I will look that up as well, but um, yeah, pretty good stats to show on the screen. I wish there was a little bit more effective use of the screen here. This middle gradient, while it does look cool, it's not very useful. Um, around the outside, you can see the gauge for the throttle, uh, zero to 100%, which looks cool, but again, probably not the most useful thing. So I'd like to see if FlipSky ever does make a firmware update for this that's uh, aesthetics. Maybe they could add some more features to the front screen or maybe make some stuff configurable. Um, for me, I really like to see my temperatures on the screen and I really like to see my uh, speed, so that's good there. But I like to see temperatures of the ESC and the motors as well as motor current, I think is cool. So hopefully that number on there is motor current, but uh, we'll find out after I install it on my board. So next, let's go into the features of this remote. All right, so the next thing we're going to talk about is the features of this remote. Now. Being a remote with a screen, the major feature on here is definitely the screen. Fortunately, the screen is a great feature and uh, it works well, it's bright, easy to see, and it has a high update rate. So that's a great feature to have, I love it. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna go into some of the other features of the remote as well. So the first one I want to point out is the reverse mode. Now this is something that's kind of useful for getting you out of uh, very specific situations. I haven't found that I've used it before, but it's definitely cool to have. So to activate reverse mode, if you recall, I didn't know what that R was on the screen and uh, it turns out that is reverse mode. So to do that, pull back fully on the throttle and press the setting button and it'll say motor reverses. So there you go. You have the ability to go backwards if you're in a pinch and you just need to do that. So that's a cool feature to have. Um, some of the other features that I want to point out here, I'm just looking at the, uh, the flip sky manual here, is the total distance display. Um, this is a really nice feature to have. There's a lot of remotes from Hobbywing and stuff that have this feature just built in. And a lot of the remotes on VESC based ESCs don't really have that. So it's cool to see it on here. Definitely a cool metric to track. Um, and actually, yeah, so, <laughs> Short pressing the setting button is how you reset and clear the trip. So I, I'm not sure how that really works because short pressing the setting button also changes your speed mode. So does that mean that it resets every time you change your speed mode? I don't know. We'll see once I get it plugged into my board. Now, the next thing I wanted to point out was the cruising mode. Um, I'm definitely not going to use this because I just don't really see the point. I always need to be completely in control of my board, but you can turn on the cruising function in the settings. Um, we'll scroll past it later when we go through the settings. And once you have that set, you can push the accelerator to where you want to go. And then you short press the power button and it will lock it into cruise mode and then press any button to exit that. So. Uh, good to know. I guess some people might use it. I'm not going to, but it is what it is. Another feature is the error reporting. So if you get a VESC error on your board, it will show up on the screen and it'll just say what it is. Can be useful, especially if you don't have a data logger. I have a data logger in my board and it's definitely shown me a couple errors that I've run into, but uh, definitely cool to see it on the board, especially if you're just out riding and you wonder <laughs> why your board has shut off. Uh, there's a couple other things here that aren't as interesting. Uh, you can change the throttle sensitivity. You can change the screen color theme. And I kind of repeating stuff here, but those are pretty much all the features that I really wanted to point out. Just reading here, the speed modes. Yeah, it's not really clear enough information here to tell exactly what they do, 
but we'll find out for sure once I start riding with this and we can mess around with speed modes. So on to the next section. One other thing that I wanted to point out on the screen before we go, uh, I just noticed it in the book. They have two bars on the bottom here. I'm gonna get it up nice and close here so you can see. This bar right along the bottom is going to be your remote battery. And the tick marks are broken up by 25% increments. Man. <laughs> Tick marks are broken up by 25% increments, and so it'll be 25, 50, 75, and it's currently at 100%. So that's really good to know. And then when this is connected to a board, there will be a bar above it, and that will be your board battery percentage. And that one, you will have to make sure that you set the correct voltage in the settings to make sure it is accurate. Uh, one other thing I missed, uh, because it's not connected, there is normally a signal uh, connection meter thingy in this, empty space right there so that's definitely useful to have and something that you might be interested in if you're going to be riding with this remote all right so we're going to go ahead and set up the remote now we're going to set this up for my mountain board so it might be a little different for you but I figured I would record it to show you guys what it's like for a mountain board so first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and enter the settings and pairing, you're gonna use that when you first pair to your remote. I showed off how to do that in the firmware video. Uh, and for some reason, down goes to the end. So <laughs> I guess we'll go through this way. IAP receiver is only for doing firmware updates. Um, so this next one is the control type. So to set that, you're going to press the, I'm not very intuitive there. <laughs> You're going to go ahead and I'm pretty sure you hold down here. Man, what? Ah, <laughs> it's a quick click to edit the settings. So you can switch between PPM, PPM and UART as well as UART. So we're going to leave it in UART right now because that's probably what I'll set it up with to begin with. To confirm the setting, press the power button one time. Moving on to the next thing, we have our ESC type. And I'm pretty sure that I want to leave this on FSESC, but uh, we have Fogbox and FSESC there. So I think Fogbox is only for the Unity. Um, the Unity uses a single MCU control, so it's a little bit different. So I'm gonna leave it on FSESC. Next up, battery cells, um, easy enough. I already have it at 12 there. Pole pairs, seven, this will depend on your motor, but typically all the Flip Sky motors have 14 poles, so that's seven pole pairs. So that is already set correctly. We are in America and I'm used to miles per hour, so that's what we're gonna stick with as well. Now, wheel type pulleyed. This is where you would select between uh, pulleyed or hub motors. Obviously hub motors are going to be a one to one ratio. So if you have direct drive, you'll also use the hub motor setting. I'm going to stick with pulley because I have gears. Now, wheel diameter, we're going to go ahead and set this. On my board, it is 200, and one annoying thing here is, I don't think you can hold, oh, you can't hold it, okay. So we're gonna call it 200. And there we go. The part here is where you're going to set your gear ratio. So for me, it's gonna be very different from you guys, but for me, it is going to be a 16 to 83 ratio. So we're going to go ahead and set that down to what it needs to be to accurately track the speed. Next up, we have throttle sensitivity. And from what was explained to me, this is basically setting uh, kind of a delay value between when you touch the throttle and when it goes. Um, level three is the least delay, which is zero. So I'm gonna leave that on zero because I don't want any delay. Now, a couple themes here. You can blue, green, red. Uh, oh, it's only blue, green, and red. So the orange one that I was calling orange is actually red, but it is what it is. So. We'll just set this to green since you guys haven't seen it yet. 
Next, your default speed. Uh, that just sets what mode your speed is in when you turn on the remote. Of course, I usually would want it in high. Cruise switch, I'm actually gonna turn this off because I'm literally never gonna use it. Um, if you have it off, that means you can't trigger it, which is an optimal situation for me. Reverse switch, something I might use, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave that on. You could turn it off if you wanted to, though. Total distance, um, this is different than your trip meter, I guess. Uh, so I probably misspoke earlier when I said you could easily reset this. Uh, of course, you could probably reset this here. Yes, you can reset it there by quick pressing the settings button, so uh, good to know. Really useful thing to have and a cool stat to keep track of. Fault codes, um, this is good to have. I'm not sure if there's anything here. Oh, I'm not exactly sure what that means. Maybe I can look that up later. And then finally you have your firmware version. So this is actually really important. If you got a first batch and you don't know if your firmware is correct, you can check here. If it says 1.0, you need to update. If it's 1.01, or later, you're good to go. So that pretty much concludes the settings and uh, you can see the green screen there, it looks pretty cool. So let's go ahead and move on to the next part of this video. All right guys, it is finally time to actually configure the VX4. It's been a minute since the last clip I recorded. You don't really know that, but I just told you now. But anyway, it's time to finally configure this. Um, I've got camera set up on my board, uh, I got screen recording going. So what we're gonna do is try to set this up on my mountain board, that which I've been unsuccessful so far, um, but we're gonna try to do it today. This is the second remote that I have. Um, the first one I couldn't get to work for whatever weird reason. So let's do this right now and we're going to troubleshoot whatever we can. If I fail to do this in this video, I'm gonna publish it anyway and uh, try to fix it with FlipSky or whatever. So let's go ahead and get started with this. So first thing you're going to want to do is actually plug in your remote. So uh, for this setup, I'm going to be trying just UART mode first. So the UART cable should already be set up for your V6 VESC. Um, hopefully we won't have to repin this. We might have to as a troubleshooting step, but we'll have to see. Um, your, your, uh, your remote can sit aside for now. So you're gonna take your receiver, plug in your cable. Um, it only goes in one way, so this should be pretty easy. So we got that plugged in there. And now we're going to go ahead and go to our ESC and plug it in. So over here on the ESC, I've got a lot going on in here, but uh, we have one open UART port right here. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it right into that. Again, only one way that it can go in here, so not much to get wrong. So we got that plugged in. We're just gonna leave the receiver sitting here. Uh, this blue wire is for the battery of the board to let the VX4 know the exact voltage. Um, I'll probably wire that in later. That's much more annoying to do than just plugging it in though. I will need to cut a little piece of the uh, power input cable and that's just a lot more involved than I want to get right now. So that's plugged in. So now we're going to power on the ESC plug in my battery, whoops. So now we see blinking blue light on the receiver. And we're going to go ahead and take our remote and turn it on. Now, theoretically, if I were to just move this right now, my ESC is in UART slash PPM mode. Um, theoretically, this should just work but it doesn't. I don't know if you can hear that, but when I press this, it just makes noise. And honestly, that makes zero sense to me. Um, 
Not really sure what that is. So we're gonna go ahead, open up Vesk tool and see if we can see anything odd going on. Um, maybe try moving around some uh, settings. I don't know, uh, maybe. You know, before we go to Vesk tool, I'm going to go ahead and try setting up See if I can get this to focus on here. I'm going to try setting up the remote in the other mode. So we have Fox box mode and FS ESC. Now let's change this to box and see if that makes a difference. I don't think that's correct. We might as well try. And nope, we've still got that weird noise going on. So off to Vest Tool it is. One additional troubleshooting stuff I'm gonna do real quick is unplug my um, Hoyt Puck receiver. This Hoyt Puck receiver is running on uh, PPM only. So there's a chance that it might be interfering here. It shouldn't be having any output at all, but we're gonna go ahead and unplug it just for good measure and try again. Oh, I still got that weird noise. So we'll hop over into Vesk tool now. So let's get this going. So we have that tool open now, and let me actually plug in my USB cable first. Got the micro USB connected to the DV6 Pro, and now we'll go ahead and hit connect. You can see VESC firmware version 5.2, uh, 5.2 hardware GoFock DV6 Pro. So 5.2 is a very modern firmware, shouldn't be any major bugs with that. So we're gonna go ahead and read motor config, read app config. And we're going to go ahead and turn on real-time app data, real-time data, um, don't need that, don't need that. Uh, actually, we'll do that too. And what we can do is go over to um, real-time data and we can see what the motor is doing when I do this. So you can see that the motor current and duty cycle are just fluctuating all over the place. Same thing in reverse. Very, very weird. Um, you can see battery is mostly charged. Um, nothing really interesting to note here. Let's see if I can turn on keyboard control. working properly but that doesn't always work properly so it is what it is um, anyway so let's go ahead and look at our settings so in here we have PPM and UART I guess one thing I'm going to try first is just switching to UART mode um, and right now we are plugged into the VESC that we're controlling uh, which is what it means when it says local um, if I go ahead and hit this CAN button It'll switch to the other side of the ESC, which is not the side that the uh, VX4 is plugged into. So we'll go ahead and try this. This really shouldn't really make a difference at all, but we'll go ahead and try that. Oh, goodness. So, Technically that kind of worked. You can't really see the wheels moving right now, but forwards appears to be working, but reverse is only smart reverse. And that is not correct. This is supposed to be in full current mode. So forwards and reverse full speed. And you should be able to see that I always forget where stuff is in here. General, 
app to use you aren't best remote right current so uh, if we turn off smart reverse maybe that will fix it no that doesn't fix it that just changes it to uh, breaking only so I guess we can try current bi-directional and that that seems to have done it so hmm very interesting if you can't have PPM and you are enabled that's very weird we'll go ahead and try this again so read read just for good measure we'll go to this and switch to ppm and uart right we're back we're back to the weird noises so hmm things that make you go hmm don't you just love dealing with best case ESCs? This is so great, bug-free, easy to use. Uh, I'm just complaining to complain. I can't really do anything about it. But um, this is very interesting because this appears to work now with PPM disabled, but that also means that I can't use the Void Puck as a backup, which was something that I was thinking about doing just in case that this gives out on me. Uh, I'd have my puck with me and I can just turn it on and use that instead. So very odd. Um, also another thing that is odd right now is the remote is showing that <laughs> the board is going 0.3 miles an hour uh, when the wheels are very clearly not moving. So <laughs> that's a little bit weird, but uh, Technically, we got this working in UART mode. Um, the data on the remote seems like it's accurate. Uh, besides the miles per hour, that's just straight up not working at all. Well, let me see if I can show you that. So on here, you can see the amp spike. Spike. And then you can see the miles going up a little bit, but the miles per hour is not working. And actually, now that I recall, it's probably still in fog box mode. What's going on? Can you not change settings while you're connected? That's weird. Let me turn off the ESC. Okay, so it's disconnected now. Uh, oh, that's weird. Maybe it thought it was still moving, so it wouldn't let me change settings. There we go. Uh, so we'll switch this back to, where is it? Where you be? There we go. Uh, let's switch this back to Fox Box. Or sorry, back to FSESC. I think Fogbox is for Unity exclusively, which is a single MCU device. Um, so maybe that's it. We'll try this out. Let's see. Plug the ESC back in. And see if the miles per hour works now. It does appear to. There you go. So, now we've technically got the VX4 working. Not working exactly how I please, but um, it could be worse. I know this is getting super long now, so if you're still watching right now, you must be really interested in this, but um, yeah, so since we're making this long, I might as well try another thing. So 
go ahead and reconnect here. Um, what I want to do is plug in the Hoyt puck and leave it in UART only and see if I'm able to still uh, use it that way. Because if I can just leave it plugged in, which we'll do right now, we'll do right now, which it is powered on. Now I can see the red light blinking, but the VESC should not receive any input from it. Let's see if that did anything. No, that appears to have worked. So, hmm, I do have a meter installed, the Meter Pro installed in this board, so I can technically change this app control um, from my phone. It's a little bit of a non-ideal solution, but it's gonna have to work for now, so I can actually test this out and make a video on it. So, I guess that'll be all for this little uh, VESC experiment for now, and, uh, get back to you with an outro. So uh, I promptly proceeded after that to not record an outro. So here we are. It's been quite a while since I recorded those clips. Um, I installed this VX4 right before I went to Carve PDX. And here's a couple things that you'll want to know. First of all, it worked awesome for the entire trip. I did almost 100 miles using this remote while up there. So that's awesome to hear. Um, it worked great. I only had to charge it twice and um, yeah, no big deal. But I really don't expect anyone or most anyone, except those that are troubleshooting to probably watch the entire part that you just skipped. Um, so quick recap, the X4 is having issues, had to switch to just UART mode. Um, no idea why, typical VESC things. So <sighs> yeah such as life. But anyway, it's working great. I love the remote so far and uh, hopefully you guys come back to see the full review. Now, that's all for now. So stay safe, keep on riding and peace out.